Yo, what's up guys? It's Double Dice, and I am super excited because Lost Ark is coming out February 8th. We have an official date, finally, after so fucking long of waiting. Although it's, although it's uh, what, February 12th for those of you that are not pre-ordering. But man, I am so excited. So today, I wanted to make a video about some of the basic beginner tips, things that you should look out for or, and or do while leveling your first characters. These are things that I picked up um, playing the game or found out later on that I just, I wish I knew while leveling my character. So let's begin. The first thing I would like to point out is the difference between main quests and side quests. There are main quests in this game and then there are side quests. The way you know the difference between the two is that main quests have a very distinct icon attached to them. And it is the orange little uh, icon right here. And the difference between that and side quests, you can see it here again. Side quests are this yellow exclamation point. If you hover over them, they have a, a yellow double down arrow. The difference between these is that main quests have to be completed in order to progress throughout the game, whereas side quests do not have to be completed. However, if you choose to skip all of the side quests, you should note that you cannot skip any of the side quests in Arthentine as they are mandatory because you will be locked behind story progression and will have to backtrack. I should also tell you that if you do choose to skip side quests in the beginning all the way up until Arthentine, that you should go back and eventually do the side quests later on at any point because they give you permanent upgrades for your character. Again, they are not mandatory, however they should definitely be completed at some point in a player's lifetime. The second thing I noticed when playing the game is that you get these boxes if you pre-order the game. These boxes contain very special loot for your character. Now there's two things to note here. The first thing is that please, please be careful as a lot of these boxes or crates of goodies, of, su of supplies, as well as permanent costumes or avatars are only given to the first character you create because the first character you create is known as your main character by the game. So be very careful to make sure that the first character you make is the character that you plan on playing the most. The second thing about this is that these boxes do contain things that are important choice-wise. For example, the healing supplies, I would recommend always picking up all of the spirit's blessings, but do not use them, as these are incredibly powerful end-game elixirs that can heal you for a massive portion of your health. They are very expensive to make, because of the fact that they are so incredibly good. For the war supplies, I would recommend taking the destruction bomb because just like the elixir, the healing elixirs, these are incredibly powerful as they're the only bomb that offers destruction on them. Hence the name destruction bomb. And lastly, for this supply crate, I would recommend choosing the Respite Potion. This potion literally causes you to become invulnerable. You can use it to dodge boss mechanics or any shitty fucking thing that's about to kill you. It's so, so powerful as an outplay uh, mechanic. This potion can literally save your life if you find yourself about to die because you made a dumb mistake. It happens to all of us. This thing will make it so that didn't happen. Now, regardless of what I have to say, you can end up really choosing whatever you want because it's your choice. Don't do something just because some idiot on the YouTube told you to. Have fun. If you really like something on here that you would rather have, like the Scarecrows or the Signal Flares or even the Campfire, choose it. It's not going to kill you. You can get these other things um, by playing the game anyway. The next piece of advice I'd like to give is for these equipment merchants. These guys can sell armor and uh, weapons or really equipables that you can purchase for silver. Now, even though this looks really expensive, it's not. Silver is a huge throwaway currency. I mean, I can buy three of these um, and then I have these coins here that give me 20,000 each. If I use all three, f uh, five of them, sorry, I get 100,000 gold. 
And getting silver is like that. It's so fucking simple. You can get it from your affinities just by playing the game. As you can see here, just look. This lady gives me 3,000 silver coins just by completing quests for her. And I'm not talking about doing the actual affinity quests. I mean doing normal quests give you bonus rewards for doing them. And either like 3,000 gold, fucking 2,000 gold. If you get into East Lutera, this motherfucker gives you 15,000 gold. Do not be afraid to spend your silver early on on these merchants. They give you powerful upgrades which you can utilize to level your character faster and get to end game quicker because more power equals more speed. The fourth item on our list is talking about waypoints. Look at this. I just went out here and I'm fucking lost. I can't get back to the place because I'm a lazy piece of shit. I want to use the waypoint. I'm going to click on it. Oh, wait, stop. That's a waste of time. Instead, hit tab because you can click. Oh, I can't click on it. That's not true. You actually can. If you hold alt and left click the portal, it allows you to actually teleport to it. That's a neat little trick that I actually learned through watching YouTube videos myself. And it is incredibly useful rather than having to press M because, well, it's much faster. While on the topic of minimaps, did you know that you can also move your minimap? That's right, if you hold the middle mouse button, you can click and drag the minimap wherever you want. This can be useful for a couple reasons. One of which is if you want to run around the game looking at the map so you have uh, indicators to follow while you are walking around and either you're slaying shit. Another reason it's useful is because most people might not like having it right on top of their player model. They want it to be off on the side so they can easier access maybe, you know, I don't fucking know. But either way, it is possible to do. So there you go. Another piece of advice that I would have for newer players, or anyone in general, is for the combat skills. Now, newer players might look at this and be thinking like this is really daunting because there's a ton of different skills as well as more that you unlock later on. And then there's skill points. What does any of this mean? How do I know which abilities or skills are the correct ones to choose? Well, there's a couple answers to that. The first thing I would say is that really there's no right answer when you're leveling. You're leveling. The difference between ability A versus ability D or X or Z or whatever is so minuscule. Just really try out different abilities and see what you like using because at the end of the day, you're not going to have fun using someone else's build if you don't find it appealing. However, if you are the type of player that does want to have the most efficient and precise experience ever, it wouldn't be fair to say that there are technically better options for your class and or character. For example, Execution is one of the more powerful abilities, similar to Tempest Slash, so I'd want to level those up the most. If stuff like that does matter to you, then simply go on YouTube or look up on the internet or even go on the Lost Art Community Discord looking at guides. You can either find leveling guides for your classes or take endgame builds and just apply them to your leveling. It's not going to hurt you. Moving on from that though, for the newer players, I would say be very careful because you do not want to evenly distribute your abilities like this. I feel that some of you may get the wrong impression and think this is the right way of doing it. However, if not, good for you. The correct method to leveling your skills is very simple. You have to make sure that each skill you d want to use is at least level 4, 7, or 10. Why are these levels specifically? Well, because every time you hit one of those breakpoints, you get a tripod effect. And these tripod effects make your character so, so much more powerful. Ignoring these tripod effects will literally hinder your character's performance later on or even in the now. I would also recommend leveling up your mobility skill first. How would you know what your mobility skill is, though, Devil Dice? Well, very simply, either read your abilities, or again, look it up. There is so much information on the internet, including videos that I have myself. So remember, do not evenly distribute your ability points, and you want to get 
as many tripod effects for your skills as humanly possible. Now, if you have made a build that you don't really like and you want to change it, well, there's two solutions for you. Either one, you can hit this button right here and reset your skills, giving back all of the points and resetting everything back to level one for free. Or two, you can go right up here and click this button. And this opens up your second layout. This is really useful if you want to make different loadouts or layouts for your character to use. Maybe you want a build for AoE and then one build for raiding single targets. Whatever you want to do. This is, you have the options to do them. When you go to start a dungeon, you will be prompted with two different difficulty types, normal and hard. Is it worthwhile doing any of the hard mode dungeons? Well, yes and no. Yes, because you can get bigger dick upgrades, like these epic item helmets and gloves. And these items are guaranteed drops from the dungeons. As you can see, you can also get silver. Normal, on the other hand, will not reward you with uh, the bigger dick drops, but the enemies inside will be much weaker, so it'll be much faster to complete. Now, if you're trying to get through the campaign as fast as possible, I would say early on, or at least in the early continents or zones, I would say that doing the hard mode dungeons isn't as worth as doing the normal, but it's really up to you to decide. And you can enter these dungeons solo with a group, or you can matchmake to find other people wanting to do the dungeon as well. You may, however, want to come back and do the hard mode dungeons if you so choose to skip them early on because they are adventure book collection rewards. Doing the normal dungeons do not credit the adventure book for the dungeon. Something else newer players might not really realize is the fact that there are two different levels. You've got combat skills and legacy skills. Now, combat skills level up your combat skill points, whereas legacy skills use your legacy skill points, and the default hotkey for this is O. Now, this is important because the legacy skills are permanent upgrades to your character's stats. This can be health, or it can be main stats. It all increases your character's power, so you should not neglect it. Additionally, your legacy levels are shared across all of your characters on that realm that they were made on. This means that you can continue to progress your legacy levels even if you're on one of your alternate characters. However, if you choose to switch to a different server, know that you will have to start from level zero. Now, what might be obvious to most people, but not so obvious to others, is the ability to manage your inventory by dismantling excess gear. If you have clutter, like I do, you can go right down here and click this little button, which opens up a separate UI, allowing you to dismantle your unused gear. Now you can either right click all of your pieces like a fucking degenerate or be a big brain Chad and use these buttons that are right below the UI to automatically move all of the corresponding pieces to that area. Then you can of course hit the dismantle button and voom voila you have a uh, junk dust hog. You can sell junk dust and the small pieces of equipment for silver, saving you the inventory space you so desperately were without. And last but not least, after you complete a dungeon, you may be prompted with the game telling you to open up your music and use Song of Escape to go outside of the dungeon. You can use that, and that's perfectly fine. And in some situations, that is the right call. However, just so you are aware, you can use the map, right click out, and go to the waypoint to travel to the area that you need to go. And that is all of the tips that I have to give to you guys uh, at this time. I hope you guys found this video informational and educational and helpful 
I hope you don't feel stupider after watching the video than you did before you watched it. Otherwise, I'm in big trouble. If you did enjoy the video, or you for some reason like the sound of my voice, or my personality, or you want to laugh at me and make fun of me, consider going down and subscribing as well as liking the video. Comment down below if you guys want to see any particular videos, or if you guys think that there is any other tips that you'd like to mention that I didn't. But with that being said, lastly, I want to say that no matter what type of player you are, please try to enjoy Lost Ark when it comes out on February 8th, 12th, if you are a free-to-play player. And I want to say that this game is fantastic. The last piece of advice I'd give you is to join a guild or play with your friends, because that always makes MMOs 2,000% better. Take your time, have fun, learn as you go. There's no rush. This game is going to be here for a very long time. And I hope you guys enjoy it just as much as I will. Peace out, love you guys, and I'll see y'all next time.